Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, what we are going to do, we are going to do end-to-end -end implementation of ML model. So when I say end-to-end -end implementation, it means that we are going to start from the data set, understanding it, creating a model for it. And after creating a model, we are going to save our model and then we are going to deploy it using Flask API and we are going to create a front-end as well, which will call this model using the API uh, request, uh, basically post API, and then we will get the result on web UI. So this is the whole, whole idea about today's video. So let's get started. Before starting with the code, I'm just going to take you the first thing in first, um, the first you through the data set. So this is the data set that we are going to consider for today's exercise. You can see that there are five columns, user ID, gender, age, estimated salary, and purchased. So uh, you can, this, I, this data set is from social network ads. Uh, this data tells us that uh, with these parameters, and this is my the target variable, and purchased zero tells me that uh, this user did not buy through the social media ad. And let's say where the value is one, let's say here, this user buy from the social media ad. And these are, uh, she was a female and she has, she, her age was 32 and this was his salary and she bought something from social media ad. So basically um, this is the data set and using this data set, we want to build a model which can tell us that uh, you that a particular user will buy from the social media ad or not so this is the uh, data set now let us and this is what we want to build from this data set we want to build an ml model which can tell us that given these parameters uh, given these pa parameters of a particular user our model will tell us that a particular user will buy something from social media ad or not so uh, this was the data set. Now let's get started with the code. I'm going to uh, go through the steps that we have done earlier many a times in a little bit fast manner because uh, um, we want to emphasize more on the things which are new or which are the we are doing the first time. So let's get started. Uh, first thing first, I'm just importing the required libraries, pandas and numpy. Then I am using this pandas object. I am reading the CSV file, pd.read CSV into a DF object, which is a data frame object. DF.head will give me an overview of my uh, data set, the first five rows with all of the columns. So you can see that I just read the um, this CSV file. Now, uh, so far, so good. Now, the first thing I want to check is whether there are any null values in my data frame or not. So th this I can do using df dot is null dot any. So it will tell me that whether any of the column have any, uh, you know, null values or not. So everything is false. So there is no null value. It is a good news for us. Now, moving forward, uh, you can see that uh, gender column has values into uh, text male, female. So what we are going to do, we are going to convert these uh, text values or categorical values into numerical values using pd dot dum get dummies method. So there is a method get dummies inside pandas library and what we how we can do with this, we can pass the uh, column which we want to convert into numerical form and there is this parameter, another parameter is drop first is true. So I'm going to tell you so you can see that now I have converted my uh, uh, this gender column into another column, male. And wherever value is one, that means it is a male. And wherever value is zero, that means it is a female. Fine. So uh, now next moving forward. Um, now user ID, as you can see that there is one column user ID. And user ID is a kind of unique identifier for a particular user which is of no use in our this context. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to drop this column. So df.drop and we are going to just pass the name and access. Access one means that I want to drop the whole column. In place true means that I want to drop from this df object. So if I will not use in place true, it will give me another data frame object and it will not drop from the df object. So now if I see, uh, sorry, 
see that execute executed it once so that's why it was it is showing me error now next moving forward now you can see that from my this data frame object that column has been dropped the user id there is no user id column now next moving forward since we have converted our gender column into uh, another numerical column column which is here with male name as male column so what we are going to do now we are going to drop this gender column with because we have whatever the value or information it this column was containing we have converted into some another form into numerical form and that is into a different data frame object so here what we want to do we want to drop this and we will append that newly formed data frame in with this data frame so let us go ahead so i want to first drop this so i'm just dropping it from gender and sorry from this data frame object and that gender column axis one and place two so now after this you can see that now my gender column is also deleted now i have only three columns left now next thing what i want to do is i want to uh, with this data frame with this latest data frame i want to append the uh, gender df my gender df was this column sorry this data frame which i got from converting into numerical form so what i am going to do i am going to concat these two data frames so how to concat pd uh, pandas object dot concat and pass the data first data frame and this is my second data frame axis one that means in concat these two columns on the column wise so and uh, assign it to, into df so now you can see that after this this has become my new data frame is is this estimated salary is this purchase is my target variable and now you can see that instead of gender column we are having column male and its values are in numerical form 1010 now next thing what we want to do is we want to segregate our x and y y is always our target variable x is our you know uh, feature vector so in in this uh, in this data frame this is my y purchased is that which we want to predict and other three column are my uh, x so how i am going to do i am using iloc method so inside iloc method uh, any value uh, like before this comma it's this means that take all the rows of these columns zero first and third so zero is age first is this estimated salary and third is my male so take all these value into x and now my x is something like this you can see 19 19,001 you can see 19 19,001 so uh and the same way uh i can what i can do is what i uh i can bring this column purchased column into y so how can i can do is i can do is using i look minus two tells me that second column from the last so this is my first column from the last and purchased minus two means a second column from the last so what i am doing is i am just taking all the values and assigning it to y uh, the column which is second from the last which is basically my purchase column so this is my x and y now i have segregated my x and y next thing what i want to do is i i want to split this x and y into um x train and y train x test and y test train and test split using train and test split class so this uh, what i am going to do is i am uh, from sql learn dot model selection i am importing import train test split and inside train test split uh, constructor basically i am passing x y and test size i am saying that how much of the values i want to keep for the testing purpose and random state value can be have any any value so this says the standard thing that i am doing after doing this one thing we have what we have not done so far is and which is required so if you have observed carefully although this is not must but it is very really advisable so whenever inside your data set you have let's say different column on different scale when i say different scale let's say some column have values from zero to one only and some column will have values in let's say in the range of zero to hundred and some column have value in the range of let's say thousand so you can see that my age my age value can be like like from zero to hundred and male column have value uh, in only two value it can be of two value one or zero purchase can also can have zero or one 
estimated salary have values in thousand. So you can see that there are four different column and four different columns are on four different scales. So uh, if we will give data in this form to our model, what will happen is that the value the uh, for the column or the, for the feature whose values are in thousands, our model will give more importance. And when it will give more importance, it will ignore other columns. And this will make our model biased. So to avoid such thing, what we do, we were, we kind of bring all the column on the same scale. So how to do that? To do this, there are different scalar available inside our libraries. So I'm using in this uh, case is standard scalar. So what it will do, it will be simply uh, basically convert the values uh, on the of the X test and Y test, uh, sorry, X train and X test uh, into a scale of zero to one. So let's say if you uh, before this, let's say if you let's say just for just to make you want if I uh, if I see the zeroth value in the X test and let's say you can see that this is my X test value and after uh, transforming it after doing the scaling. So to do the scaling, I am just importing the standard scalar, creating an object of that. And there is a method sc dot fit transform. Fit transform means it will train itself as well, and transform will only will transform. So basically, you can think in this way. You can learn it in this way. Um, whenever uh, for the training we do the fit transform, and for the testing we do only the transformation. So uh, I am doing the sc dot fit transform for the x train, and I am assigning it to x train again, and sc dot transform for the x test, and uh, getting into x test again. After this, now if I if I you can see that after transformation or the, on the scaling, uh, after doing the scaling, you can see that earlier my X test was this, have values 30, 87,001. Now you can see that, sorry. Now you can see that my this has come to this. Now it is representing the same thing. It is representing the same thing and Sorry, I, I just executed it twice. So that's why it is. Now you can see that it has value 30, 87,000. And now after this, now if I run it, now if I run it, you can see that earlier here value was 30. Now it is coming as minus some 0 0.79 and 0 0.494, 87,000. And for one, it is coming like this. So it is nothing. It is just, uh, you can think of just converting um, values uh, from one scale in on the, uh, uh, just converting the values from different scale uh, onto the one scale. So that's the only thing that we are doing here. After this, in the next step, what we are going to do is we are going to create the object. We are going to use for our model. We are going to use Gaussian navbase here from the sklearn.navbase. We are importing Gaussian navbase. We are creating an object of it and then classifier is the object and classifier dot fit we are doing the training over x train and y train after doing the training what we can do is we can do the prediction using the x test and now i have get values into y predict y pred now i want to check how my model is doing the accuracy to get the accuracy from sql and dot matrices we are just importing accuracy score um, so inside accuracy score we pass the y test and y predicted and then it will give us the accuracy. So you can see that the value is 0 0.29925. That means we are getting a value of 92, accuracy of 92.5%, which is really a good one. So next thing, uh, the main important thing starts from here. Now, let's say we have finalized our model from that we are going to do, we are going, this is the final model, and this is we want to deploy. It. After this, what we, the next thing, what we need to do, you can one more thing like now next part is uh, using the pickle library we are going to save our model so uh, for the uh, this point of time for you please uh, i have commented these two line of code i will tell you why and i i will let you know so now how to using pickle library there is one library with, with which we can convert any object into uh, into a file. So it is somewhat similar to serialization that we do in our different programming language. So I'm just passing the object name 
and I'm saying that save it with this name, uh, save it with uh, this name and with these rights. So it will pickle dot dump, it will save, it will create a file and will save here in my current directory. So after this, uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just loading it again. So if you see that uh, in my current directory, so you can see that uh, nb classifier dot pickle. So if I show it to you, uh, uh, nb classifier, sorry, nb, 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 nb can be here, nb, a, here, here it is. So this is the file that I have saved. So this is my model. And now if you have observed very really carefully, so what I'm going to tell you is that when we trained our model, we have given these values uh, into this form. So basically what we have done, we have done the scaling of our uh, scaling of our input parameters that we have given. So the same thing uh, and we have uh, so the same thing we, we need to apply during the during the production as well. So for the same what we are going what we are going to do is we are going to save our uh, standard scalar or the scalar object as well just like we did we saved our or we serialized our uh, model the same way what we are going to do we are going to save our scalar uh, scalar object as well and we are going to apply this thing using the same object we are going to do the transformation um just before passing it passing those value to this particular model so we are going to use it so so that's why what i'm going what i'm doing is the same way this is my sc sc is if you if i show it to you sc was my this one there is my sc sc here it is so this is my standard scalar object so what i'm doing here is i am saving my standard scalar object as well so and i am going to use it later in the stage and why I am going to use that I have told you and I will repeat it again when I will be using it. Not an issue. So from, the, from this point till this point, what we have just done is we just saved our standard scalar object and model object into files and which we are going to use later in the cycle. So uh, next line of code, you can uh, just uh, testing purpose and you can ignore because those are not much uh, you know required at this point of time now let us move on to so as of now what we have done is if i show it to you i have this nb classifier dot pkl and my scalar dot pickle i have saved so this is my scalar object uh, standard scalar object and this is my model object i have saved them into file now using the um, flask framework I'm going to create a app.py file. Basically, app.py file is um, is basically we need to create our file name, uh, the main file. So it, you can assume it as a main file uh, for the you know uh, for the Flask framework. So whenever I have Flask framework will start, we will be running this file. So I'm going to use this uh, code. So so this is the code from the Flask framework, import Flask request JSON file render template. So it is very simple uh, from the Flask framework, we are importing few classes and then we, I am importing pickle and numpy as well. Now here I am creating the, uh, creating the object of Flask framework and creating an object as app. Now, next thing what I'm going to do is uh, just like I told you earlier, using the pickle module as well again we can load whatever we have saved so this is my model so what, here what i am going to do is inside this so you can think of that this model have been saved into this file now i am creating my backend backend which is the api which will call my model so for that what i am going to do is i am i will need this uh, this model object so uh, what i am doing is using pickle.load i am reading this file rb means uh, with read permission and the same way i am using uh, i am opening my or loading my scalar object as well after doing this now app dot route this will tell me that with this path whenever we will call this um, this with this uh, so 
def home will be called and it will render the index.html. Index.html, I will show it to you as well. This is my index.html. So it is nothing but it is it is a simple uh, HTML file where we have a form and we have four uh, input parameters. One is like which we are going to take from the user. So one is salary, another is age, another is mail, and then we have only one button. So it's a very simple, plain HTML file. And on the uh, on the click of this on the click of this form or on the submission of this button, I'm just using this uh, URL for predict. So I'm uh, I'm calling this predict. Uh, this method will be called on this uh, predict slash predict. So that's what uh, I'm, I'm binding my HTML file with this um, backend. So whenever any, uh, whenever, so whenever from this form, Whenever this uh, post request will be submitted, it will go to this predict. So slash predict. So slash predict has this method and this method will be called df.predict. So this is method type. I have told that this is a post method. So what I am doing, what I am just doing simple thing. Request is again, uh, request is again uh, a module inside the uh, Flask framework. So what I am just iterating for x in request dot form dot values. So whatever the values I'm reading from form, I'm just going through those values and just converting uh, them into integer using list comprehension. So end features are my uh, array of features in form of integer. Now, uh, what I'm next, what I'm doing is uh, since I need to pass these values in a 2D array, so I'm doing np dot array int features and I'm taking it into a list as well. So these are my pre-final features. Now, assume uh, assume that uh, the value have come from, let's say, uh, so if I show you the, uh, just one second. Uh, uh, so if I show you the, what was the, uh, I forgot the name. What was the name of that? Um, here, here could demo, and this is my index.html. If I run it, so this is somehow this this is the HTML file, which is this one, which I just showed to you earlier. It is not working as of now because I have not uh, made the you know wiring up of it with the backend. So if you will tap it, something it will not do. So I am taking three parameters: salary, age, and mail, and this is my backend. So I am reading the form values and before you can stay, before passing these values to the uh, model, what I am doing is I am doing the transformation. I am doing the scaling of these parameters. So whatever the values I have got here and using the scalar object, scalar object is the same. If you remember correctly, which I saved using pickle file, this object, this is the same object. I, what I did, I just, reload this object because this object is already trained on this data set. So I'm going to use uh, the transform method, scalar.transform, whatever the input feature I'm getting. And I'm just, so what, what this line of code will do, this line of code will uh, bring all the values on the same scale, just like we did during the training phase. And it will convert them into, it will give me another 2D array. And the, the final feature, then I am passing to model.predict. Model is my, the pickle, uh, the, the NB, NB classifier.pickle. Model is that model object, which I created from here. And it will give me the prediction. Now, my prediction is going to come into form of zero or one. If I show it to you now, if, so this, this is how my prediction came. So this, you, if you think of, this is an array with one value only. So this is an array with one value only. So here what I'm going to do is if my prediction, um, this is my prediction, so it will give me an array and this array will con always contain uh, one value. I mean, one uh, value, zero, length of one, um, sorry, length of this array will be one. So if at prediction zero, it is one, that means I'm considering it as a true. So that means if my model gives me one, I'm taking it as true. 
If my model is giving me zero, I am taking it as false. If there is some case, by some case, not to get, so I'm just taking it as not sure output. And then using render template inside this index.html, which I shown to you here, index.html, this is my index.html. In, inside my index.html, I'm just, whatever the value I'm getting, I'm formatting it and passing it to here. So, and this is my, so uh, this is my basic code. This is my basic uh, backend. So with app.root with the uh, slash, so it will just give me index.html and whenever uh, slash predict will be called, it will, this model will be called, uh, it will, sorry, it will do the first transformation of whatever value will, we will give and it will convert into a 2D, um, 2D array and this model will predict and based on prediction, I'm just rendering the value. If, if the value is one, I am, I am rendering true. If it is zero, I'm rendering false. If by chance there is something else, I'm rendering not sure. So, so far this, this thing is done. Now, after doing all these things, our backend is ready. Our front end is ready. Front end is, I mean to say is this HTML file. It a plain HTML file with three input parameters and one button. And on the click of this button, I have bound, uh, I have uh, made the connection that on predict, this method will be called. I have, and when I deploy it, so to deploy it, what I'm going to do is you, what you need to go, go to Anaconda Navigator and the, open this command.exe file. So once you open this command.exe file, go to your uh, parent repository, uh, parent folder, Heroku demo. And if I show to you, this is my Heroku demo. It is nothing but, this is the app.py file, which I just shown to you. This file is this one, app.py, Heroku demo.app. And name-based classifier, this is the PN, uh, this is the Py, Python file. This is, this one is I, IPYNB file. Uh, I just taken it. This is the pickle file. And this is again the pickle file. As of now, we do not need this. Uh, these two files, we can ignore this as of now. And inside template folder, I have my index.html, the plain index uh, HTML file, which just takes now, after uh, after opening this anaconda command prompt, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do Python app.py. I just told you that app.py is my backend main file, which is going to be executed. So now if I run this Python app.py file, uh, you can see that, now you can see that uh, serving flask app Lazy loading, this is a development server, do not use it in production environment. And then it is saying that running this on this. So it will give us a URL, whereas in um, this deployment has been done. Now, if I go here, if I close this, now if I run this, now you can see that uh, we are getting uh, this HTML file rendered. Now, if you pass some values, let's say 1,70,000 is my salary and let's say my age is 30. And as of now, we are taking male, female value in one or zero. If I am taking one, that means it is male. If I am taking it as zero, that means it is female. So now I, have, I am passing these values. What will happen after? So after this, uh, if I will click predict button, what will happen? And after clicking the predict, it will come here. So it will come here and this predict method will be called. And this predict method inside this predict method, whatever value we have passed, it will just convert those into integer values. And after converting integer value, it will just transform them into the, uh, transformed them into the, on the same scale. And then it will pass it to the model to do the prediction. So if I, let's say, if I click on the prediction, then you can see that this is the output. The user will buy from the social network ad and true. True means this is the, true means this user will buy. Now, if I take another example, let's say my salary is 10 rupees, just hypothetical. And this is, let's say my age is also 10. And let's say I am a male. And you can see that this user, this user will buy from social network ad is false. 
so that means this user will not buy just to show you on the debug purpose side if i i can what i can do is i can take you through this uh hero code demo and if i edit this file just uh, print the values so um uh here let's say if i my print initial values so these are the values which i am getting from my html form i am just printing them and these logs will be generated on the and and if i uh, next thing uh, if i i want to show to you is let's say yeah transformed feature so i want to show you the final feature so i just want to show you why i have taken the scalar object why i have uh, uh, serialized it and why i am using that same scalar object uh, inside my backend so if i uh, let's say now for this i need to run it again i think uh, it should pick it now let's say if let's say again i use this is is my 30 and mail is let's say my 0 and let's say if i predict it now if i go here now it should print it see these are the my initial values which i uh, got from my uh, html form then it converted sorry it it was the same initial values uh, we need to convert it not initial value here is uh, you know uh, scaled values so you can think of uh, so i mistakenly took the same thing so it has converted those value and this is my prediction value it gave me one one means true so let me run it again so let's say if i run 10 uh let's say 10 and let's say 0 now if i predict it i think i have not saved it is it so it is running should not take that much of time i think it was not it was not saved it was saved uh, 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 uh. it is still running it is still running so uh, let me do let me rerun it so what i can do is uh, just to make it clear to you guys let me close the command prompt again uh, let me close this command prompt and from anaconda launch it again i just want to show you how it actually works internally so from here i go to cd hero to demo now here from here i just type python app.py now if i run it it will run my backend will deploy it to my flask framework and you can see that um they starting with the api reloader and this at this url this my backend is running uh, if i run it you can see here now we he, here we do not have any logs as of now it is one thing one thing is good that it is clear now let's say if i have this and run it now you can see that here are the logs these are the initial value which i passed then these are the scaled value using the scalar object i converted them because why i converted because during the training i trained model with this way only so th the same way we have trained our model we should pass the values uh, in the same way because if i will pass here 10000 20000 my model may give different result because uh, my model was not trained in th those type of values my model was trained on scaled values so on in the backend let's say app.py i do the i should do the scale so these are my scaled value and this is my prediction value is zero whenever prediction value is zero if i show you the code as well whenever my prediction value is zero then it means it is going to it is going to give me a false 
and this is the same thing it is giving me a false so this is how basically uh, the front end is calling back end and then back end is using the uh, model and how uh, the model is predicting how model training is done how deployment is done using class everything have been covered in this video so that's all for this video guys and stay tuned for more such interesting video um, if you want to learn machine learning from the scratch and um, you can check the uh, check the description box uh, description box i will uh, drop the link for complete machine learning playlist for absolute beginner if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe it and uh, please let me know if anything should be improved upon so that's all for this video guys till the next video bye bye take care